The death toll in Guazulu Natal is edging closer to that 400 mark with many still missing. Some families spent the Easter weekend looking for loved ones. Many more are living in fear as more rains are expected throughout this weekend. Let's get an update from KZN EMS spokesperson Robert McKenzie. Uh, a very good morning to you, Robert, and thank you so much for joining us. So, of course, we are looking at a, a death toll very soon, I would imagine, of 400 people still, you know, uh, desperately looking for their loved ones, some of whom are, have already accepted that some of their loved ones have passed, but they still would like that closure of finding um, their bodies. And then, of course, there are those that are displaced. I mean, if you can just give us an update as to those who are displaced, what is being done with them, those who are looking for their loved ones, how far are we from finding uh, more people? Good morning. Um, yes, it has been raining throughout the night here in Itzakweni, uh, which is a problem. Uh, it hasn't been raining that heavy, and we haven't received any new call out for flood related emergencies. Um, the P there are still several cases where people are missing. However, this is from the initial floods which happened earlier in the week. And there are search and rescue teams out looking for these uh, missing people. You can imagine it's a very difficult task mm. uh, considering, imagine somebody is swept into a river that w water is moving so fast that the point, they quickly disappear from the point where they got swept in. And that makes it very difficult to start looking for that person um, along the river. At what point do you start searching? Um, so as EMS, we're still on high alert for any possible uh, emergencies. However, no new emergencies reported at this stage. How heavy manpower is there? How, how many people are you guys deploying to you know, spread across the different affected areas to ensure that um, you know, the, the recovery of bodies, you know, the, the assistance of those who are displaced is, is a little quicker? Mm -hmm. Um, well, as an EMS perspective and as a, from an ambulance perspective, uh, we still have all our um, paramedics out working on the road mm -hmm. and on high alert. Um, remember, from an EMS perspective, uh, we are responding to mainly our typical kind of caseload, people who are sick needing ambulance to get to hospital and undertaking inter-hospital transfers. Um, that's the main role of the, EM, of the ambulance services and the search and rescue teams of uh, Momani falling under the fire department and the police, which is a different department from the ambulance service. However, those members, having said that, are out and about uh, still actively searching for people where they have been reported missing. Robert, I don't know if you'd be able to answer this, but just if you could speak to us about the volume um, of people in hospitals since, you know, mm. the recovery of bodies and the recovery of people who've been affected mm. uh, by these floods. What have hospitals looked like um, with you guys taking people there? Mm. Yeah, um, hospitals have been a bit busier uh, considering that there have been more people injured. Um, remember, some of the hospitals have also been affected by the rain. However, the department is actively working on managing that and sharing resources where appropriate. Now, obviously, you're saying that you guys are waiting for people to, to call on, on, on your services. So in, in the meantime, what is it that you guys are doing? Is, is there any kind of proactivity? Um, what, mm. what do you guys, do, while you're waiting to hear about more cases, what is mm. it that you guys are doing? Yeah, well, like I said, we're on high alert to be able to respond to any of these cases. Uh, we do have personnel in the Joint Operations Centre to be able to relay information for help that comes in as soon as possible. Mm. And, yeah. Robert, I mean, the question that I think a lot of people never really bother to ask because you're expected to be the ones, you know, at the forefront ensuring that people are assisted and ensuring that people are safe, ensuring that people are, are recovering a little better is what about the people in the emergency services? They are human too. They do have families as well. They must also be affected by these floods. How are the people in the KZN EMS dealing with these floods themselves from a personal point of view? Now, that's a good point. Um, I think everyone forgets that we're human as well. However, our guys are strong, they're resilient. Um, as much as many people have been affected by the floods personally, um, we are able to con continue and carry on in our, our drive and our passion is to go and help people, which is what we do. Robert, uh, I think on behalf of all South Africans, uh, 
I thank you for your guys' service, for what it is you are doing, and for what it is you'll continue to do to assist those who have been affected by these floods. I think it's not just the people of the KZN affected by these floods, it's the entire country. So we really do thank you for all that you do, and all the best in, as you continue uh, to provide those services for the people that are affected in Guazulu Natal. Of course, we were saying that the death toll is creeping up on 400. When we left the studio yesterday, it was sitting at 395. It went up, um, as per the update from the Premier, to 398. So it could be 400 by the time we get to it today. So thank you very much, Robert McKenzie, for that. He is from the KZN EMS.